For this video, I will be discussing and looking into what makes up the best current practices for the creation of asset textures in 3D film. In order to properly understand the current workflows and industry pipeline used for asset texturing, however, I will also be looking into the past of the art as well as my own opinions in regards to its future. Texture mapping was first pioneered by Edwin Catmull in 1974, but due to the technological restrictions at the time, surfaces were limited to fong shaders only. Shaders continued to be used in the 80s until in 1986 when Lucasfilm's 3D graphics department was purchased by Steve Jobs. He made Edwin Catmull president of this department that was then named Pixar. In 1988, they released Tin Toy, a short that marks a huge milestone for asset texturing and the CGI industry as a whole. They designed their own software, RenderMan, to allow Catmull's ideas of texture mapping to be finally put to use and was therefore able to use photo textures on assets. They used real photographs in magazines and picture frames and realistic textures on the floorboards and couches. Later in 1995, the first fully animated feature film Toy Story was released. In this film, a new high level of detail was achieved and made consistent throughout the film. Elements as simple as the asphalt on the street were done by developing new technology in order to create an effect that makes it look random enough to be real. At the time, but what still is, the current industry standard and workflow for the texturing of 3D objects was the use of UV mapping within the 3D programs such as Autodesk Maya, and then using procedural image or hand-painted textures from Adobe's Photoshop to apply any artistic manipulation to the assets. By 2005, CGI and visual effects films were no longer a novelty and an integrated part of the film industry. 2007 saw the release of blockbusters such as Transformers and I Am Legend and Pixar's Ratatouille also released. Commonly referred to now as one of the most aesthetically pleasing films, Ratatouille was made using extensive and highly detailed hand-painted image-based textures in order to give its Paris environment the old age look it required. In 2009, James Cameron's Avatar was released, a record-breaking film with a staggering 2,500 visual effects shots that changed the way we look at texturing. Before beginning production, the team at Weta researched to find a texture program they believed could handle the level of detail Cameron was after, but when able to find one, they developed the now widely used software Mari. Mari is a 3D paint tool that allows artists to paint directly onto models from 3D space rather than having to flatten the object through the use of UV mapping to be painted in 2D programs such as Photoshop. Following the footsteps of Mari's creation, two more programs were soon developed using 3D paint software. In 2009, Image Engine's District 9 was released, using Body Paint 3D. In 2008, Disney announced their own projection software, Ptex. First demonstrated on a T-Rex, they soon integrated it into all of their major film pipelines, starting with Vault. Unlike Weta, Disney created Ptex as a way to fasten the pace of the texturing pipeline by removing the middleman between modeling and texturing, UV mapping. Despite the technological advances and hype surrounding 3D painting, it has not yet become the industry standard, with UV mapping and Photoshop continuing to dominate the industry. Procedural texturing is a common way to texture in an industry, as you can quickly create textures within the 3D program you're using, rather than having to take them into Photoshop. For instance, in Maya there is a preset of 3D textures. To make one of these, for say, wood, open Maya and create a texture such as a blend on your object. You can then add a wood texture to it. From here, the material is very basic and any renders will look quite horrible. It takes a lot of testing and playing around to perfect textures. For this one, I'll change the attributes of the wood as well as play around with the colours and add a stucco node to my wood's vein colour. I can then create a bump map within Maya using my same edited wood texture but applied as a bump and eventually with enough experimenting you'll start to achieve the sort of wood you're looking for, which can then be applied to a range of objects. Currently, Pixar and Disney are reworking the way they texture, and even make their movies. In 2011, Pixar's short film La Luna was released, featuring extremely detailed, hand-painted organic textures, and even some watercolour paintings for its environment. Then in 2012, Disney's Paper Man and later Feast in 2014 brought a whole new element to the CGI field. Both movies were made in CG, hand-drawn hybrids which blend the two arts, allowing the artists to paint over the 3D models in the in-house software called Mender. These ideas of putting 2D art over 3D are also discussed in the SIGGRAPH paper, Styling Animation by Example, in which experiments with the ideas of painting over keyframes of animation is discussed, 
and then having the frames blended to create a seamless digitally painted but CGI character. The paper also discussed overlaying CGI footage with texture such as traditional paintings, hatching, line drawing, and watercolour. While there are not currently any feature films announced for using any of these techniques, the future of film is looking exciting. In March of this year, Pixar released their Random Man software online for free. The idea of this software now being out there for free with anyone with the know-how and skill to use is very compelling, and I very much look forward to seeing the future of this industry and texturing work.